How do you do conditional looping logic in Elixir? Everything's immutable, and it's a functional language. Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. If you want more tutorials like the one coming up, join my newsletter. I send tutorials to people on it. All right, so let's get into this. If you need to do looping logic, where there's a conditional in it, this is the basic strategy. Use a multi-clause function, then define a recursive base case, and then add additional function heads to do the main processing, one per branch. Sometimes you also need a helper to kick everything off. Uh, for example, if you use an accumulator to do the processing, you'll need a little helper function to start it, unless you want to call the function with the, uh, an empty accumulator every time, which we're not gonna do. Okay, so this is probably the simplest example. A factorial is uh, just all the numbers up to a given number multiplied by each other. So the factorial of five means uh, five times four times three times two times one. So the factorial of one is one. The factorial of n is n times the factorial of n minus one. So here we've got a base case. Once we get to this case, we're done processing. Say we try to find the factorial of three. This definition will say it'll return three times the factorial of two, which is going to be two times the factorial of one, which is just one. So when everything is unrolled, we have three times two times one. Now, this is a, a trivial example, so let's do a slightly harder one and go through it step by step. So I'm gonna take a phrase and capitalize any of these names that appear in the phrase. We'll call our function names. So names, and this is going to take in a string, and we'll call that argument phrase. Now, what are we going to do? Well, first thing, we're gonna start a multi-clause function. We're gonna use a helper here because it's, it's hard to work with just this string. Ideally, we want to have two arguments, one of which will be a list, and actually the other one will also be a list. So we'll just take items off the first list and put them into the second. So let's open up IEX. So we'll start with our phrase of hi, my name is Alice, and it's not capitalized, this function should capitalize it. First thing that'll make it easier to work with this phrase is if we split it up, so string.split, our phrase, that'll give us a list of words, that's easy to work with. So we're gonna call a function that takes two lists, first one will be the input we're working on, second one will be our solution we're building up. So this will be names with string dot split phrase is our first argument. Then the second argument is just an empty list. Okay, and keep in mind in Elixir it's a different function if you have a single argument versus if you have two. So this is really the beginning of our recursion starting now. So we'll do names of when it's completed, our base case, when everything is pretty much solved. That's going to be when the first argument is just an empty list because we've already processed every item in it. And then we have some accumulator. So what do we want to do when we've already processed everything and we've put all of our, our solution into the accumulator? Well, we want to return the accumulator. Since we started off with a string and then broke it up into a list, let's join it back up into a list. So we'll do enum.join and accumulator, and we'll join it with an empty, uh, an empty space like so. So if we were to do uh, the same string that split phrase and then join all of this list up with enum.join. We get no spaces at all, but if we have this argument, it joins them back up with spaces like it was. 
We're going to have to do one more thing, but we'll get to that in a minute. So we've got our base case done. Now how about the main processing? So define additional function heads to do the main processing, one per conditional branch. What are the conditions? Well, really we've just got two things to think about. We've got uh, the case where the word at the front of this list is one of these names and the case where it's not. Let's handle the case where it's not first. So we'll say names. So we've got something here that's not an empty list. That means it's got an item at the front, which is the head. We'll capture that as name. And then there's the rest of the list. Actually, let's call that the tail. So we've got uh, a name at the front. And what we want to do is just eat that off of the list. So we'll call names again. And instead of calling the name and the tail, which is basically everything that came in, we're just going to call the rest of the list. So if, if we got 10 items in, we'll be calling with the last nine items. And then we need to build up the solution in our second argument in our accumulator, which I forgot to put in here. So in here, we want to basically just put that name, just pass it along into the accumulator. So this will be the list, including the name first and then everything else that was in it before. For example, here is our split phrase. So I'll just call this words equals that. And if we were to do uh, uh, next word, or just next, and then the existing words, you can see we've put next here at the beginning of the list. It's much more efficient to put things, to add things at the beginning of a linked list than the end. So we're just going to be working with the front of the list. Okay, so this should basically do nothing. This should just, uh, this should break up the phrase into a bunch of words and then pass all of those words into our names function, which will basically take one word off of the front at a time calling itself with less and less in the first argument and more and more in the second until everything is in the second argument. The first one's empty and then it joins it back up. Let's see if this works. So we'll compile uh, loop.ex and loop.names our phrase. And loop.names1 is undefined. That's because I didn't save the file. Okay, it's not ending. So it looks like we had some kind of infinite recursion. Let's see what we missed. Uh, we move names, tail to name, and then accumulator. Ah, the problem was I passed. Uh, I passed, and so tail was already a list. I passed a list with a single or, or with a single element of the entire list that was that was tail. So now we should be able to recompile, and we're going to re-declare our phrase, and we should be able to loop through everything. Oh, look at this! It's all backwards. Alice is my name, or is name my hi? So the problem here is we took the first item off the list of words, and then we put it in here in the accumulator. Then the second item comes off and it goes before the first item. Then the third item comes off and goes before the second. So we're not going to change the order in the processing, because as I said, it's much faster to do it this way. Instead, what we'll do is we'll just reverse it all when we're done. So we'll do enum dot reverse uh, the accumulator and pass that into enum dot join. So now we have a function that does absolutely nothing. It just uh, it splits the string apart 
into a list of words and then one by one it moves those list uh, those words from that list into an empty list and then once it's done it puts them it reverses them so they're they're back in the right order and then it converts that back into a phrase that's fine we just need to add our conditional so names uh, when we have uh, at least at least one name remaining to be processed and our accumulator and we'll put in a guard with when so when name in name list then we're going to do something a little bit different then we'll we'll still be passing along the tail to the next step but we'll do string dot upcase on that name and as before we'll be putting that in the front of the accumulator so what you look at everything together here we basically have two conditions so we made one function head for each one this one is more specific when the name is in the name list so this will only match when it's in the list whereas this one would match anything with this structure so in fact if we put this one first this one would never match which is why we had to put the more specific one first let's save that and recompile and run our phrase and now we have hi my name is Alice and we should be able to try it with other phrases and get the same kind of results so loop names hi mark uh, mark how are you actually this will not work because uh, mark would also pick up the period so let's let's just keep the simple case hi mark and now it says hi mark so that is the basic strategy step one use a multi-clause function possibly with a little helper to kick everything off step two define your recursive base case which is where everything is done you've essentially solved the problem and then step three define additional function heads to the main processing one per branch hope you found this was useful if so definitely don't forget to sign up for my newsletter and i will see you next time